hello people in this video let us look at mitral regurgitation regurgitation okay mr it's also called as mr so here is the heart and where is mitral valve here is the mitral mitral valve it's also also called as what bicuspid valve isn't it are you able to spot it here is the mitral valve and this is also called as bicuspid valve isn't it so basically what is happening mitral regurgitation that is something is coming back here so that is why it is called as mitral regurgitation right so look at this diagram here here you have the s1 isn't it and here you have the s2 s1 is produced when s1 is produced when there is closure of mitral valve and tricuspid valve isn't it so what will happen here now after it closes after the mitral valve closed the blood is flowing back from the left ventricle to the left atrium so what will happen there will be pansystolic murmur this is a chronic condition of mitral regurgitation you will see pansystolic murmur if it is an acute condition you are going to see more like an early systolic murmur but just remember everything systolic murmur the mitral valve has to close and then only the blood is going back so this is systolic murmur when when will you see this mitral regurgitation pansystolic murmur you will see in chronic mitral regurgitation and you will see early systolic murmur in a acute mitral regurgitation what else will you see now because because the heart the blood has all gone back here which was not supposed to now what will happen in the diastole right in the diastole the rapid ventricular filling will produce s3 so s3 also can be heard in these people okay go back here to the di diagram so we have marked an s3 here so it is possible that you will hear a s3 because of rapid ventricular filling okay what else in these people what will happen there can be a mid diastolic murmur also we have marked here as mdm mid diastolic murmur also can be hap uh, can happen in severe cases so what will happen to uh, the s2 so here you have a2 and p2 right that is s2 so what will happen also there has been regurgitation now what will happen is uh, the blood here will be less isn't it so what will happen to the aortic valve it will close sooner so aortic valve will close sooner so what do you think will happen here there will be a wide s2 okay so where will you find wide s2 wide s2 you will find in wide split s2 you will find in mitral regurgitation remember wide split s2 wide split s2 you will find in mitral regurgitation also in this case you can see soft s1 is marked s1 will be soft why will it be soft so because this mitral valve is weak right so that is why there is regurgitation and that is why there is a soft s1 also okay so listen to the normal heart sounds now listen to mitral regurgitation pansystolic murmur like we told you there is chronic uh, and acute um, uh, mitral regurgitation so chronic means what gradual onset of symptoms right what will you see in the murmur murmur will be pansystolic but in acute it will be early systolic murmur isn't it then what else um, fourth heart sound is heard mainly in mr of recent onset that means in acute mr you will have fourth heart sound did we mark that in our chart see this is acute mr and here we have put s4 that's correct so in uh, acute onset it can have s4 right let's go back to the literature then what else in chronic there will be cardiomegaly it has got used to all this um, regurgitation and it has just become big and it has only adjusted to all of this right then but in the uh, acute mr the heart rate is normal okay what else when you say acute mr why will it happen guys infective right infection suddenly something happened trauma some acute rheumatic fever myocardial infarction it's something sudden only will happen isn't it then like let us look at the chronic causes so basically whenever we are saying mitral regurgitation we are talking about chronic here so you can see rheumatic heart disease congenital um, mitral regurgitation can be there infective endocarditis papillary muscle dysfunction so because of what what will happen so here if if this is the heart and here you have the papillary muscle and the muscles are weak so what will happen the mitral valve will not be strong yes so there can be mitral regurgitation okay so you blame the papillary muscle a little then what else injury surgery same things 
so some things are very similar to the mitral valve prolapse okay so if this is your um, heart and here you have the mitral valve so the mitral valve prolapse can happen because of what connective tissue disorders right uh, so you will talk about uh, collagen disorders so there you will talk about ankylosing spondylitis rheumatic arthritis systemic lupus erythematosus marfan syndrome ehlers danlos syndrome right then you can talk about uh, the mitral annular calcification so basically regurgitation happen because this um this is the annulus is calcified right so that can happen then the leaflets the cleft mitral leaflets with ostium primum asd what is this so basically very close to the mitral valve you have this um, it um, it will septal defect so which is affecting your mitral valve and there is regurgitation that's what it looks like right guys so what will be the symptoms of these people what do you think will happen if there's regurgitation so obviously dyspnea right so imagine if this is the heart and there is regurgitation here so the pressure here is more so if the pressure here is more definitely your lungs are affected so there is dyspnea because of pulmonary edema so there will be fatigue palpitations right because this atria is having a uh, impact so there can be atrial fibrillation so there can be palpitations right so what are they talking about here dyspnea okay fatigue palpitations okay then what are the signs that you will see you will see hyperdynamic apical impulse okay this is what this apical impulse is hyperdynamic hyperdynamic comes in what mitral regurgitation but you saw the heaving apical beat that was in aortic stenosis right so in mitral regurgitation there is hyperdynamic apical impulse okay then we told you there's a soft fs1 because the mitral valve is uh, not proper right it is not uh, strong so soft s1 then s3 over apex because of the rapid ventricular filling there can be s3 we have shown that to you here so s3 will be there because of rapid ventricular filling very good then uh, widely split s2 where will you see widely split s2 in mitral regurgitation long s2 widely split s2 remember will be there in um, mitral regurgitation so what is happening all the blood is going here so there is less blood in the left ventricle the aortic valve will close fast so if aortic valve closes fast the a2 will be shifted this side right so there will be wide wide s2 right in what in mitral regurgitation very good then let's move on um, what about the mitral valve prolapse they are talking about here you will have a systolic thrill okay and there are two leaflets only right so this is a mitral valve so there is an anterior leaflet and a posterior leaflet so if the posterior leaflet is most commonly involved they are saying right so the posterior leaflet is most commonly involved okay and if it is anterior leaflet that is involved it will the pansystolic murmur at apex radiating to axilla axilla and back if anterior leaflet in, is involved if posterior leaflet is involved it is radiating to the base so here they are showing mitral regurgitation what can you understand here let us see here you have the right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle so i should be seeing something happening in the left atrium isn't it so looks like something is happening here right so how will you classify this uh, mitral regurgitation so severity they are deciding based on some vena contracta the amount of blood that is going back the regurgitation volume the fraction the orifice so let us look at this so vena contracta is this area and based on the measurement of this area they are trying to tell you the severity if you want you can look at that right and they are talking about the presence of s3 if s3 is there or not that and all will indicate the severity okay and like we told you in late stages there can be mid diastolic murmur also like what is written here so in late stages in severe uh, mr this can also be there so all this will indicate severity so what will be the issue for these people yes like we told you atrial fibrillation is a problem what will you see in the ecg you will see left uh, p mitral so mitral regurgitation you will see p mitral so the p wave will be something like let's see normal p wave right something like this is what you're supposed to have right p wave will be something like this so like an m so that will become a p mitral let's see the actual ecg so they are showing you here p mitral mitral regurgitation right this is because of the left atrial enlargement remember who is enlarging here left atrium okay 
so uh, left ventricle also can enlarge based on which they have told you the severity so if it is left ventricle also has enlarged it will indicate severe mr but the first person to get affected is who the left atrium and there can be when uh, atrial fibrillation what will you see in x ray x ray you will see cardiomegaly because the left atrium is increased right so what else will you see pulmonary edema can be there okay so if left atrium is increased they are showing it here posteriorly so there is a walking man kind of a uh, thing because of the right main bronchus what is this carina angle right it is more then in this heart border right heart border you can see some dual border isn't it because of the left atrium increasing and here in the left border the left atrium the auricle is more so if the left atrium is affected who is the first person to get affected yes it is the lungs so pulmonary edema some curly b lines they are talking about then they are talking about echocardiogram here you can see the left uh, atrium is enlarged kind of looks like enlarged to me how does it look to you so left atrium is enlarged dilated and um, regurgitation is detectable that's also nice then let's move on to the management of mitral regurgitation okay so here what are they talking about here saying medical they are talking about giving nitroprusside to reduce the afterload and diuretics they are talking about but surgically what do you think you should do for this valve so basically they are telling that you should do valvuloplasty repair this valve which is actually allowing this regurgitation to happen you re repair the valve okay that's important there's also a new technology called transcatheter mv clip let us look at this they don't actually pre pre prefer a replacement uh, only replacement they're talking about in older patients look at this they are going from the right atrium to the left atrium <clears throat> they're going down here and they're putting some clip for this mitral valve okay so that's your transcatheter mv clip so did you understand guys in this video we looked at what mitral regurgitation so in chronic you will see pansystolic murmur softest one will be there in uh, mitral regurgitation you can have a s3 because of rapid ventricular filling in severe you can have mid diastolic murmur what else guys um, the there'll be a wide s2 remember wide s2 in mitral regurgitation if it is acute the thing is you will have early systolic murmur early systolic murmur that's the only change and you can have an s4 okay how do you know this mitral regurgitation is more uh, the criteria they have given here you can see the left ventricular end systolic dimension greater than 40 mm dimension so this is the uh, how big it is right this is more like a length right end systolic dimension so this should not be uh, the, if it is greater than 45 mm or if the left ventricular ejection fraction is less than 60% okay